Okay, that's like so cheesy and I'm literally cringing. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please subscribe. So today I'm going to be talking about how to ace the Barnard application. But what this video won't include is things about the Common App essay and kind of about the Common App because I feel like there's lots of information on the interwebs about that stuff. If you want to know more, you know, specific tips on what to write your Common App essay on, I think that you should, you can just look for that elsewhere. This is going to be more Barnard specific information because that's what I'm familiar with and that's what I have experience with. So I'm going to be talking about the Barnard supplemental essays and how I think you can really catch the eye of the admissions team and all that kind of stuff. But another disclaimer is that I'm obviously just a student. I'm a senior at Barnard. I don't actually know, you know, fully what admissions is looking for, but this is kind of my thoughts on the matter, how I approach the supplemental essays. Kind of another disclaimer to make is that the supplemental essays, I am assuming here, do change or vary a little bit year to year. So the prompts for my supplementals in 2016 are going to be or 2015, I guess, technically, are going to be different than the ones that you might be answering now as a prospective student. So just keep that in mind. And one of them that I see popping up pretty frequently is why Barnard. And another one that seems to be common across the years is what woman in history would you want to meet? And then for my year, the third prompt that we had to answer was tell us about a time that you majored in Unafraid, which to me is a similar way of asking the question, you know, describe a challenge that you faced or like a hardship, just kind of in a different way, if you will, because Barnard's tagline either was, is, will always be majoring in Unafraid. Wait, no. What is it? It's like I majored in Unafraid. So yeah, that was one of our questions. And I do believe we had three supplemental essays that we had to write in addition to the Common App. I will start with the general tips, tricks, suggestions for approaching the Barnard supplemental essays. Lots of colleges have their own version of this. You know, if you're applying to Boston College, it'll be why Boston College. If you're applying to the University of Alabama, it'll be why the University of Alabama. So this supplemental is really just thrown in there to weed out the people who are maybe applying to Barnard as a safety, which would be kind of crazy to me because it's, it's hard to get into Barnard's, but I do think it's just kind of a barometer that they use to gauge your actual interest in this school. Barnard is, is full of students who are genuinely so passionate about going to Barnard. They wanted to go to Barnard. They wanted to go to an all women's school. They wanted a liberal arts education, all that kind of stuff. And so to me, the Why Barnard supplement is really your time to showcase your passion, passion for Barnard. This is where you just go off, where you really describe, you know, in a genuine way, don't be, over dramatic about it, but really describe why you want to go to Barnard. And this one should be the easiest supplemental because if you really want to go, I do think this will kind of bleed through in your response in a natural way. You know, they don't want you to say, I want to go to an all women's college, so I want to go to Barnard. Okay, there are other all women's colleges, so that's not a full answer, you know. They don't want you to say, I want to go to school in the city. Okay, well, here's a list of a bajillion other schools in New York City. Maybe not a bajillion, but like many. They want you to be addressing that question in a way that your answer would only fit with Barnard. You don't want your response to be able to like slap on Wellesley or something and it would still make sense or NYU. Your response has to be specific to Barnard. It has to show that you've looked into Barnard's programs, the uniqueness of Barnard, it really needs to show that you've put in the work to learning about Barnard and that you know that is genuinely, you know, a place that you will thrive. And I do think that your why Barnard response can be very specific to your situation. So if there is some really kind of unique major at Barnard that you really like, you can mention it here. If you want to do there's something with like a 4-1 pathway with C's at Columbia. I don't know, I'm not like a smart. Well, I am smart. 
I'm not like a math science person or tech person so I'm not really knowledgeable on that stuff but there are some like very unique things that you can do through the Barnard Columbia relationship and so if you know you want to go to Barnard to do this one cool thing that only Barnard and Columbia has mention that when they're reading that why Barnard response they know that you are a very niche student who would fit in perfectly with this cool niche thing that Barnard and Columbia has to offer. So just to recap, don't be too general. Don't say, I wanna to go to an all women's college. And likewise, if you say, I wanna to go to school in New York City, that doesn't answer why Barnard. That's not to say that you can't say, I wanna to go to Barnard because it's all women's and because it's in New York City. You can most certainly say those things because those are driving factors that lead people to want to apply to Barnard, but elaborate on them and really hone in on something about Barnard that that draws you to the school specifically. And also I do think that you don't have to beat around the bush about the Columbia connection. I don't think it's something that you have to pretend like isn't influencing your decision. I don't think it's a bad thing to want to go to Barnard because you like the connection to Columbia. However, I would make sure that when you're answering why Barnard, it doesn't read like a love letter to Columbia because Barnard wants students who want to go to Barnard, which you know, of course, the students who want to go to Barnard probably do in some capacity also want to go to Columbia because it's a strong connection and you will be spending lots of time at Columbia, but they don't want it to seem like you want to go to Barnard to go to Columbia, if that makes sense. I hope I'm making that clear. So, you know, don't you don't have to shy around the fact that Barnard and Columbia have a relationship, but definitely highlight why you want to go to Barnard as, you know, and differentiate it from why you would want to go to Columbia. One major tip that I feel like is perhaps obvious, don't give a basic answer, which like that's annoying terminology, but I feel like people will understand what I mean by basic answer. You don't want to say Rosa Parks or Anne Frank or Hillary Clinton. Not that those are not fantastic women that you could have great conversations with. That's not to say that you don't want to meet them, but all I'm saying is that those are kind of responses that to me come quickly to mind. Like if someone were to ask me in two seconds, what woman from history would I want to meet? I would probably answer someone like that or like Joan of Arc, that kind of stuff. And that being said, that means that other applicants to Barnard might be doing those more basic answers. And then your answer is going to be the same as theirs. Really, I think the key to supplementals and college applications in general is uniqueness and individuality. You want them to remember your name as associated with your ideas. So if 20 different people, whatever it may be, all say Anne Frank, they're gonna lose track of who you are. Whereas if you have a unique you know, response to that, they're going to say, oh, there's this really great applicant, her name is blah, 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 and I remember that the woman that she wanted to meet from history was was this woman that nobody else said. I really do think unique responses to that question that showcase your own interests and in like a unique aspect of your personality maybe, that is really the way to go with that question. And in fact, we had someone DM our Instagram and she asked us about this supplemental essay. She basically said, I have this woman in mind I won't say who it is, and I wanted to write about her in my supplemental essay. However, she was afraid that this woman was someone who had kind of lobbied against women's rights. And so what this girl was DMing us about was she was fearful that because the woman that she wanted to write about in her supplemental essay kind of fought against women's rights and kind of things that Barnard stands for, she was worried that Barnard would take it the wrong way. But she explained in her message to us that she would want to meet this woman and have a conversation with her to be able to kind of see across the aisle and understand the perspective of the other side and see where these women are coming from. I fully encouraged her to respond in that way. I think she was fearful that the Barnard admissions team would kind of read it the wrong way and be like, why does this girl want to meet this woman from history when she doesn't stand for what we what we stand for she was expressing you know a concern that i think is warranted of what if i want to meet a woman in history who isn't really the the barnard type basically i said to her to totally go for it 
I think this is your time to go out on a limb, say someone unique like that, say a woman that the Barnard Admissions Office isn't used to seeing. You know, say a woman that doesn't align with your own beliefs and explain that, like this, this girl was saying in her DM, you know, I would want to talk to her and understand her viewpoint and gain more sympathy, empathy, apathy, whatever the word is, for what the opposite viewpoint holds. Don't give a basic answer. Don't be afraid to do a woman that you don't think that the Barnard admissions team would have heard of before. Don't be afraid to go out on a limb. Don't be afraid to explain your answer because the admissions team is going to give you a shot. It's not like they'll read the woman that you choose in your supplemental and if they don't like her, you know, they're gonna just throw out your application. They want you to have an opinion. They want you to present evidence for your opinion, to give your reasoning, and they want you to be confident in your answers. Barnard isn't looking for a cookie cutter answer, so don't concern yourself with what, what are they looking for in this question. However, an answer like Rosa Parks or Anne Frank or Joan of Arc might, in my opinion, be edging on wrong answer territory, even though I just said there are no wrong answers, but I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. This one is personal because maybe you've had, you know, a great life and you honestly haven't had that many challenges and you don't want to sit here and make up a challenge. You might have to approach this question in a different way as someone else. I think that this question can really warrant a very personal answer as the other ones can, but everyone's way of majoring in unafraid is unique to them because what is difficult to one person is a piece of cake for someone else and what's really easy for someone else might be really hard for you. And so if you're the kind of person who maybe hates public speaking and this one time in high school you gave a presentation and you feel like it was an awesome presentation, that can really be the time that you majored in Unafraid. Think about something that you did that was hard for you that you feel proud of because when you talk about that, it will read as genuine. You might be thinking to yourself, oh no, this isn't a challenge, or is this really a time I majored in Unafraid? It's so simple for some people. But the point is, if it was a challenge for you and you felt like totally brave and unafraid in that moment, then that's a completely valid answer and I encourage you to answer it that way. I'm going to give you guys a peek into what I wrote about. And before I start reading these, I feel like I guess I should say this. Please don't like take my ideas, <laughs> not that anyone would, this is such a weird thing to say, but I don't know, I know that none of you are actually going to take my words or my ideas or anything. This is just supposed to inspire you and like give you a look into what I wrote about, but you know, don't copy, we don't like plagiarism here. The first supplemental is the Y Barnard, I'll just read through this, if this is going to be boring to you, I guess don't watch but I feel like this would be helpful if I had this when I was applying. So here's what I wrote. <clears throat> <clears throat> As I walked through the gates of Barnard during my second visit, I knew it was the school for me. Of course, I was impressed with Barnard's academic rigor. The new curriculum foundations impressed me with its balance of academic courses and general education requirements. The student, facu student faculty ratio of one to seven ensured me a personalized learning experience and the extensive list of possible major, majors assured me that I could study what truly inspires me. So this beginning part was basically, hey, look at me, I read about all these stats about your school, I did my research and I'm informed. That's a good kind of foundation to give with this question. Let them know that you know about the school, but don't go on and on. They don't want you to regurgitate like a pamphlet that you got on a Barnard tour. Establish that you've done your research, but you know, move on from there after that. So after that, I wrote, however, what truly solidified my love for Barnard was an unquantifiable factor. The college's power to transform students into powerful, capable women. Every Barnard student I encountered while visiting campus carried herself with an unspoken confidence that I observed on no other campus. The more I learned about the college, the more I realized that Barnard graduates do not simply leave with the diploma. Graduates instead leave carrying the tools and knowledge necessary to change the world, and more importantly, the confidence to do so. Okay, that's like so cheesy and I'm literally cringing as I read it back. But when I was applying to Barnard, I really wholeheartedly believed that. And I still do. It's just very 
very cringe and like kind of over the top but that's genuinely how I felt and I really was like wow I want to go to Barnard because I want to be like these other students that I'm seeing on campus I want to carry myself that way I want to have that confidence and I did believe in what I was writing which is really important I ended this supplemental essay with this past summer I entered the gates of Barnard as a slightly nervous yet excited prospective student who was awestruck by the women that Barnard molded I can only hope that one day I will exit Barnard's gates as a confident, educated woman ready to take on all that life has to offer. That is what I wrote. That's it. I chose Jhumpa Lahiri. She's an awesome author, if you don't know about her already. She's a Barnard alum and she went to my high school. I actually found out about that because in my AP English class senior year, my teacher made some remark about like one of the best students he's ever had and her name was Jhumpa Lahiri and I was like what? first book of hers I read was Interpreter of Maladies it's really good you guys should read it and The Namesake that's another good one sorry anyways I started doing research on her and I was like she went to Barnard she had my English teacher like it was so crazy to me so it just seemed serendipitous I felt like I should write about her I'm not sure what the vibe is with writing about Barnard alum. I don't really have a strong opinion on that. Here's what I wrote. Jhumpa Lahiri is many things, a world-renowned writer, Pulitzer Prize winner, and New York Times bestselling author. She is also a Rhode Islander like me. I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. I'm drawn to the power of words, their ability to elicit emotion, even change the world, even change... Okay, there are some errors in this. I'm gonna skip over this part, it makes no sense. Okay, so I basically talk about some stuff in the middle, but I'll jump to the end. If I could have a conversation with her, I'm sure we'd discuss how difficult it was to pursue wholeheartedly a goal that seemed unachievable. My home state. In pursuit of a writing career. Hopefully she'd reply, if I did it, so can you, because that's exactly what I plan to do. Aww. Basically, my whole theme for this one was... I was drawing a parallel between the fact that here's this amazing writer who came from the exact same place that I came from and she made it big and basically the gist of this one was, wow, if she can do it, I can do it too. That's super inspiring. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to share from my supplementals because the challenge, major and unafraid one, I feel like you will know how to respond to that. It's not really that helpful. That's kind of a more basic one. I hope this was helpful. I hope you cringed along with me at those supplemental essays. I hope this gives you an idea of maybe what they're looking for, how you should approach them. I'll reiterate, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not qualified at all to be giving advice. This is literally just personal experience. Leave any comments below with any questions that you have, any clarifications that you need. DM us on Instagram. We always respond to our DMs. It might take us a day or two to see your message, but we will respond nonetheless. And let us know other videos that you want to see because we listen to requests. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later.